name's Miss Vermani or Miss V for short. I'm really excited to be sharing with you one of the ways I've been making art from home. Um, I'm going to show you how to make your own sketchbook. It's really easy and it's really fun to do and the best part about it is I use the materials that I just found around my house. So this video is going to show you how to churn old cardboard, copier paper, uh, random stickers, markers uh, into a place to put your artwork and your sketches. I love my sketchbook. I go everywhere with my sketchbook and it's such a great place to just um, sketch and have fun and play around. Um, so enjoy the video and I can't wait to get started with you. Hello everyone, um, welcome to my art desk. So today we're going to be making your own sketchbook. As you can see, I have gathered all my materials here. I have copier paper, fun tape, stickers, markers. Um, I have two different kinds of hole punches, but we're only gonna really use one, and a piece of paper with a clothespin. This is going to help keep all of our pages of our book together. It's really just a piece of paper with a clothespin. Um, seems really simple, but it's super important. So let's get started. So first I'm gonna collect all my paper, and as you can see, they're all the same size. Um, you can make any size you want, but for this specific sketchbook, I chose a six by six inch uh, piece of paper. I used old paper that I had from different projects. I used po uh, copier paper, and then I just cut it down to size. As you can see, my two cardboard pieces for the front and back cover um, are also the same size. Uh, and you could, again, do this different sizes if you want, or you can do it the same size. So as you can see, I'm using the piece of paper and the clothespin to hold my papers and my cover together. This is going to help make sure that the hole that I use to attach the book is um, at the same spot for every page and the cover. So I'm trying to figure out the center of my uh, edge of the cover just so that I can see exactly where I want my bind to be. I made a little mark with the marker and I'm using my hole punch to make an imprint of the circle. I'm not trying to make the hole because it's too many pages and too thick of a cover to um, punch a hole through. But as you can see through the pages in the cover, there's enough of a circle that I'm going to use as a guide so that I can make sure that my hole punch is in the same spot for my cover and my pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a couple pages at a time, not too many, don't wanna make it harder for yourself than it has to be. And I'm going to make sure that that hole is in the same spot for my pages and my cover. This is going to take a little bit of time, but while you're doing this, it's really important to make sure that all the pages are lined up and everything is put together really nicely. What I love so much about making my own sketchbook is that I can control the color of the pages that are in it. I can control the size that it is. I can make it have uh, more pages or less pages. And I'm using this to make my own sketchbook, but at the same time, you can use it for any kind of book. So right now I'm taking the other half of my pages and my back cover. And I'm doing this in two parts because there was just too many pages to really make an imprint with my hole punch. So I'm taking one of the pages, that purple sheet, from my first set and I'm using it as a template or a guide to help me make sure that the hole is in the same spot that it is for the front cover and the other pages that I've already punched a hole through. So again, I'm using that little piece of paper and a clothespin to keep everything together so that it keeps it still and I can make sure my imprint is in the same spot for every six by six inch square. As I was saying before, making your own sketchbook is just so freeing. This summer I was able to play around with a lot of different sketchbooks and I found that this sketchbook is pretty cool because I can easily take it apart if I want to change out the pages. Maybe I made a mistake on one page and I just don't want it in there anymore. Maybe I want to add more pages to my sketchbook. 
um, and it's a really easy way to keep all of my art together in one spot. Now that I have all my pages and my two covers prepped and ready to bind, I'm going to focus more on the cover for right now. Right now, I'm just going to double check just to make sure everything lines up, looks good. And now I can play around with decorating the cover. For my sketchbooks, I always like to pay attention to the cover because it's kind of like the first page of this book. I like to use different things to trace. I love different colors to use. I like to make this sketchbook specifically stand out because it is my own creation. I made every part of it. So I really like to start with circles. I don't know why. I think I just like the shape a lot. And I find with when I'm having a blank space, it's really nice to start off with just a shape. Sometimes we hold things too precious, like a nice clean piece of paper or a book cover in this instance. And it's kind of hard to just start drawing. So I like to start with a shape, lines, and colors. And once I start there, my mind kind of just starts to wander. Sometimes I make mistakes and sometimes I don't really like what I'm drawing, but I just keep pushing through and my hands just kind of know what to do. You can have a lot of fun with your cover, um, making it stand out. Maybe you have siblings and you want to make sure that uh, they don't touch your things and by drawing your own designs, you can definitely say, wait, that's mine. So what I'm using right here is a piece of washi tape. Uh, washi tape is really fun tape. It's just tape that has really fun designs on it. Um, now this piece of tape that I'm using has a funny story. So my dog, Stitch, actually got a hold of my brand new washi tape roll, the flower one, um, and I, I could not find it. I had just bought it and I was really excited to use it and I couldn't find it. And then all of a sudden I saw him chewing on something. I go over to pick it up and here it was my brand new washi tape roll. I was really upset because it was all soggy and ripped up and I was, you know, really looking forward to using it. Um, so I just put it on the counter for a few days to let it dry, get all that dog slobber off. And it actually turned out okay. I dried it out. Um, it's kind of ripped up a little bit, but I really like the edges. So even though I could have just gotten really upset and thrown it away, um, I kind of, you know, had some more patience, let it dry, and was able to still use it. If you don't have any cool, fun washi tape like I do, um, you can use any kind of tape that you have if you want. The blue tape that I used was just painter's tape. Um, and as you will see later on in the video, I'm going to jazz it up a little bit with some designs. Or you don't have to use any tape. You can use stickers or just draw on it if you'd like. So right now I'm outlining my lines with a thin black Sharpie. I like to outline things, just it feels like it's more of a drawing that way for me. Sometimes I go right up to the edges of drawing. Sometimes I leave a little space in between that line and uh, whatever it is that I'm tracing. As you can see, my cover of my sketchbook is developing here. I'm kind of just letting my imagination take over. And it's really freeing to do this. I find when I pay attention to the cover of my sketchbook, a lot of the times, it makes me super motivated and makes me ready to start drawing in my sketchbook. So as you can see here, I made some little designs on that blue painter's tape. It's kind of hard to see just because I used black on top of a darker blue, but you'll be able to see it a little clearer later. So now I'm looking through some of the stickers that I found laying around in old scrap piles. Um, stickers that I thought were really fun and didn't really have any purpose to use anywhere else, but now I'm going to put them on my cover. Actually, I took them from my mom, but I asked her, don't worry. 
So now that I have my drawing done for my cover, I'm going to start to add some words. You can do this if you'd like, but you don't have to. I always like to title my sketchbooks. It's just something funny that I do. So for this sketchbook, I'm going to title it Summer 2020, just so that I can remember when I made the book, when I made the drawings. Uh, my mom always reminds me to date all of my drawings so that I know when I made them. So this way I don't have to date every single drawing, I can just label the whole book. Another really important thing I do with every sketchbook that I have is I add my name somewhere. A lot of the times it's just on the inside cover, but for this book, since I get to control so much on the cover, I'm drawing my name on the front. The reason why this is so important is because if I lose my sketchbook and all of the precious drawings that are in it, I want to make sure it gets back to me somehow and your name is a good place to start. So like I've said before, my name is Miss Romani, but my students call me Miss V. And it's really fun to play around with different ways to write words or write your name. And by using the circle as kind of a shape to write my name in, it makes it really fun to write and to read. And as you can see, when I'm writing, I'm taking my time. I'm treating this like it is an art piece on its own. If I make a mistake, it's okay. I didn't really want my name to get so small there at the edge. But, you know, it's just a sketchbook and it's unique because I'm making it. So even if you make a mistake while you're making your cover or while you're drawing something on the inside or whenever you're decorating anything, it's always best to just keep going. I find that if I make a mistake and I stop, then my artwork just goes downhill from there. I'm taking my metallic silver sharpie that I just got and I'm adding little details around just to put up those final touches on my cover. And again, they're circles. I don't know what it is about me in circles. As I'm wrapping up the little details on my cover, I'm starting to get ideas about the different drawings I want to put or add into my sketchbook and I'm getting really excited. I'm gonna wrap it up here for now and add one more sticker and a little bit more detail but if you don't finish your cover right away that's okay. You can build your book first, add a little details on the front cover, back cover, uh, maybe inspiration will strike a little bit later too. So if you don't get it completely finished before you complete building your book, that's okay. You can always come back to it later. So now I have my front and my back cover. I drew my back cover a little while ago, but I put some inspira inspiring words there just to make sure that I stay motivated while I'm drawing. I'm going to add my front cover to my other pages that have the hole punch in. I'm splitting my book again just to have a little bit of an easier control on where and how I put my string in here. So I'm going to put my string through the front cover, through the pages, um, and out the other side. I find it easier to push the string through than to pull it through. I'm also going to use my pencil to help push the string through, and I'm going to bring it pretty far out. I'm then going to take the other half of my sketchbook, the pages in the back cover, line it up again really carefully till I can see through the hole, and then I'm going to push that string through. I tend to use a good amount of string. Um, I would say that this piece of string is probably more than 12 inches. Um, it's always better to have a little bit more than you need than less, just in case you need a little bit more. So I'm laying them up again, I'm pulling the string through, and now is the tricky part. I have to bind or tie them together, but I don't wanna tie my tie or my bow or my knot too tight, because if I do it too tight like I am right now, 
I'm gonna have a really hard time opening my sketchbook. So right now, I'm just going to test it out. I'm gonna see how tight I can actually make my tie um, and still be able to hold the pages together and open my sketchbook so I can use it. I'm not cutting anything off yet because I'm still testing out how much string I'm gonna need, how, tie, how tight my tie is. After I'm pretty comfortable with my tie itself and how much string I'm going to need, I did trim it a little bit and now is, it's time to test out how much I can actually open my sketchbook. So I can't really open it that much. Whoops, that's okay. I'm gonna untie my tie and I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit. The goal here is to be able to open my sketchbook so it's nice and flat on my table. Sometimes it's even easier to make it super loose like it is now, so I can open it up the whole way. And then when I'm not using my sketchbook, I can tie it a little bit tighter just to make sure that everything's in there. Everything's secure and I'm not gonna lose any pages. So even though I may double knot my tie, it's still a little bit loose so I can untie it later if I need to. Again, I can untie it if I want, I can add more pages, I can take out pages if I'd like. That's what's really fun about the sketchbook. Now it's time to make. I'm gonna take my other hole punch that has hearts in it and I'm gonna use it to start my first page. If you're like me and you, you, your mind is just a little bit quirky, um, you, you might find it easier to start in the middle of your sketchbook. Sometimes, like I said before, we treat things too preciously um, and starting at the beginning of the book might be a little bit scary or intimidating but that's okay find another spot or another page that you want to get started on I love that I got to use purple paper for the sketchbook so I'm gonna start on a purple page I started off with two stickers a hole punch I have my colored pencils and again I'm just gonna let my imagination run free Starting to draw in your own sketchbook, it might be a little bit scary because you worked really hard on building it and you want to make sure that it looks great inside and out. But know that if you make a mistake, you can always turn it into something different, something new. And you don't really have to show anybody the sketchbook if you don't want. I think that's what I love so much about sketchbooks is that I can make mistakes, I can try things out. Sometimes if some things look really cool sometimes not so great but it's up to me if I share that with others or if I just keep it to myself I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you get to try to make your own sketchbook it's really fun it's really freeing and it's really great because you can use a lot of materials that are just in your house What's awesome about this size sketchbook too is if you want, you can take it with you anywhere you go. You can take it with you when your parents do errands. You can take it with you in the backyard. You can draw while you're watching TV um, or if you're hanging out outside. I really hope this video was helpful for you. I hope it kind of uh, inspires you to become your own bookmaker as well as your own artist. I think that being able to make your own sketchbook like this um, gives you a lot of ownership over what you make and how you make it. So have fun making your own sketchbook. Remember, mistakes are part of the process and it's okay. And I hope you have a really great time building your own sketchbook. Bye.